Hello there, my name is Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today we're going to attempt to repair this Toshiba power supply for my wife's laptop. Basically, as far as I know, it was working absolutely fine, and then she said to me, Vince, my laptop is locked and now I can't turn it on, and I was like, have you plugged in the battery, is the battery drained, have you plugged in the power supply? Yes, it's plugged in, it's not doing anything, so I thought, ooh, that's strange. Anyway, long story short, basically, the power supply has failed. Failed. hasn't been water damaged or anything like that it was just working and then it stopped working so if you have a look there's nothing happening there at all it's plugged in at the moment what I've done is I've checked to see if the fuse is okay and the fuse is okay I'll just show you that now purely for the purpose of the video there you go so you can see we've got continuity through the fuse I just want to see what fuse it is 5 amp sounds about right And I am going to, because I haven't actually checked this side of it here. So let's do that now. I'll just do it using continuity, then I don't have to worry about having it plugged in. So the earth is going to be the top one. That's okay. And do you know what? It looks a tiny little bit green in there. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, just a tiny, tiny. There's no point in zooming in, you won't see it. It's just a tiny little bit. Right, so let's do this one here. Yeah, and it's not shorting anywhere else. No, nope. and this one here. And not shorting anywhere else. Right, okay. So that says to me that the lead is going to be just fine. So if we were to plug it in, which I'm not going to, we're going to have 240 volts AC at the end of that. So let's put that to one side. I can't check if the lead's faulty or not, but it doesn't feel weak. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel... That it's, uh, that it's gone. So annoyingly, this is glued all the way around. This particular one outputs 19 volts at 3.95 amps. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to break the seal around the edge here. So it's gonna be quite destructive. So I've got a flathead screwdriver. So I go whackety whack whack with the hammer and this thing is a complete nightmare to get into. Other people on other videos give it a few taps and it comes apart nicely. I don't know what it is with this one but it is welded shut. It feels like every millimeter of it is glued so it's extremely destructive getting into it. That means then even if I can fix the inside I don't think I'll be able to glue these two parts back together safely enough for it to go back into service. You can tell a product like this hasn't been designed to be serviceable. It's dangerous. Even though it's unplugged now, high voltages can remain on the inside in the capacitor. So even if you've got it unplugged, you can still get a shock on the inside. Take this video purely for entertainment. Do not copy what you see in this video. I am going to attempt to fix it and I will see if it's working at the end. But it doesn't mean it's going to be safe to put back into service because, for example, if you glue yours together and that glue fails, then somebody could get electrocuted. It's not an item that can easily be fixed. It's not an item that you can easily get into. Most people will just throw it away and get a new one. But I'm just going to see what the failure is and whether it can work again. But do not copy what you see in these videos. Yes! Oh, that was a satisfying one. Did you hear that one? Come on now. We're in. So they're not screwed there. They're just little tiny little feet to stop wearing away this uh, sticker here. Right, obviously I have to be very careful because we still might have high voltages in here. Right, there we go. Look at this. What is that? Oh, this has had some kind of water damage, I bet. Unless the capacitors have leaked. Hmm, not sure. Hmm. I'm trying to smell it, but it doesn't smell like anything that I really know. Right, interesting. What's caused that leak? Are we going to come out? Yes, we are. But well, there's nothing down there. So I don't think they're going to go back together. 
Well, you never know. If I clean it all up, I might be able to super glue it, but I just personally don't think it will be, don't think it will be safe. safe. Right, so we need to unclip this from around the edge. Looks like we've soldered, soldered onto here, so let's undo that. Let me just check for voltages. Is there anywhere I can check? Well, I'll tell you what I can do before I worry about this. Let's see, because it might be a lead problem. Let's go between here and here. So set the meter to continuity so it beeps when the wires touch. And it looks like we have the black and the white going in here. So I presume black is going to be the outer one. Yes. And white is going to be the middle. Yeah, okay. So that means the lead itself is okay, which I thought it was going to be. Let's get the soldering iron on and uh, unsolder that bit there. Then hopefully we can undo this. Oh yeah, look at this. Wow. I'm really curious what went bang. Deary me, I didn't realise at the time I was sniffing it so much, people are going to start talking. I generally, I, I don't think I sniff things, but every time I watch back a video, I seem to be sniffing everything. Anyway, I, I didn't really know what it smelt off, a smell I haven't smelt before. So uh, yeah, I was wondering at this stage whether it was electrolyte from a capacitor or whether something had been spilt on it. Right, can I measure that big cap? Where's it going down to? So we're going to take this off. Big cap looks like it's... Oh, hold on a minute. Has the big cap blown? Would that have caused all this? Maybe. Yes, look there. That big cap. That's bulged, hasn't it? Look here. Can you see? It's bulged there, I think. Right, I better put some gloves on, because this might be uh, electrolytes. Right now. That to me looks like it's bulged out the end. I think it's lost everything in there. I think all this liquid is actually from that cap. And it's just gone everywhere. So it looks like both legs are going down here. If I was to take a guess, I would say it would be these two. Looks to be around about here. Let's measure them in DC. Let's see if we've got anything. No, so there's nothing there. Have we got a fuse or anything on the way in? There we go, see there? So it's a T, so it's a 250 volt fuse, 3.15 amps. Let's see if the fuse is okay. No, fuse is gone. So the fuse has gone. So it looks like the capacitors vented out the top. That's what they're designed to do. And it's spilled its electrolyte everywhere. And the, the fuse is also blown. Not quite sure what's happened here, whether the capacitor went faulty, which then blew the fuse, or whether something happened coming into the line and it blew the fuse. And before that, the capacitor spilled its guts. Not too sure. Anyway, I want to take them both out of circuit. 100% the fuse is faulty. I just want to make sure that this isn't liquid damage and it is definitely the capacitor because sometimes capacitors can bulge, but it doesn't necessarily mean they've leaked out their electrolyte just yet. So I want to unsolder them from the circuit and then we can measure them out of circuit to see what they're doing. All right, first of all, let's just double check this fuse. Right, so 100% the fuse has blown. Let's go to capacitance. And this is 120 microfarad, 420 volts. So this is the negative side here. Let's see what it is reading. No way. Wow, <laughs> it's really, really close. Hopefully the ESR is going to be off the scale. Let's see. All right, so 120. Well, let's go to 100 volts. 420, let's go to 470. So worst case scenario is 0 0.05. Let's see what this is. I'm hoping it's going to be well out. Yeah, there you go. So it's one ohm. Wow, so that's a resistor. So I need a new cap. I need a new fuse. But I wonder, did something cause this to blow? Like, you know, it, it looks like something's had some high voltage surge, doesn't it? To blow like that. 
Hmm. It's strange. See, I'm not sure if there's something else in the power supply which has caused the cap to go like this, or is it just the cap that's failed, which then took out the fuse? Not too sure. So right now, I'm just gonna change these two components out and see if it works. Worst case scenario, I'll blow the cap and the fuse again. It's not the end of the world. Parts like this are not overly expensive. So I look through my parts bin and I find a suitable cap and also a suitable fuse. And now we're just gonna measure that cap and then uh, pop them in and see what happens. And as if by magic, here we have 420 volt, 120 microfarad, and look at this one, 0.02 on here, compared to 1.72. So you can see it's completely different. And I've also got a fuse of the same rating as well. So we needed 3.15 amps, and this one here is 3.15 amps. Also 240, uh, 250 volts. And if I go to continuity. Ta -da. So let's see now, if we pop these into here, will it come to life? So I'm gonna pop positive to positive. So these components are not new, that's why all the legs are kind of bent up and stuff, and they're a little bit short. I'm trying to have to kind of get them into place to make sure they go through the holes. It's always good to keep failed fixes because then you have a supply of spares to fix other things in the, again in the future. So personally, I don't throw anything away. I put them to one side, and then often you can get a spare part from them when you're trying to fix something in the future. And that way then, it's free because you've already spent that money on a failed fix before. There we go, it's all snug back up in its blanket now. Right, let's uh, try to put this back together. I'm just gonna widen up these, because it looks like we've got a kind of like a channel here, and then this one goes into it. So if I straighten these all out, there might be a chance that I can glue it back in. You never know, it might actually be usable. I can't remember how it goes back together, but I can see the shape of that matches the shape of that, so it has to then go that way, like that. And again, I can see the glue here goes onto here. So I'm just putting it back together, but I'm not gluing it shut. If it all tests okay, great, then we can glue it shut. If it doesn't, we can do some further fault finding. Right, I won't be touching this because it's not glued yet. Let's leave it there. But hopefully if it does explode, it's not gonna have the power to throw that up. Right, plugging it in now. Good, there's no noise. Let's see, have we got any output? Come on. Result. 19.5, result. And what was it, 19, yeah, 19 volts. Brilliant, it's working. So yeah, that went 40, I presume it's shorted and then drew too much and blew the fuse. Brilliant, right, okay, I'm gonna get some super glue and I'm gonna to try to uh, glue that together and put some weight on it or something to close it down. All right, so let's just put loads of this around it. Hope I've got enough. So the good news is I just about have enough. I eke every little bit of it out and I put a tiny little bead all the way around the edge. So that's nice. So what I'm now gonna do is put the lid on. The end bits where the cables go in, they clip down nicely because there's not much damage on those bits, but the middle bits are really damaged and that's where I was doing most of the hammering with the screwdriver and the hammer. Uh, I put some clamps on either side just to give the super glue a good chance to, uh, to set and uh, I wanna fill up the gap in the middle because you see where the damage is, there's about a kind of mil or two mil gap along. So I'm just gonna use some hot glue for this. I'm just melting it in there and uh, just with my hot air station and that way then it can flow right into it. And then what I'm doing is I'm getting a little scraper and I'm heating it up again and scraping the excess glue off. To clean up this glue, it's quite easy to clean if you use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. So I'm just doing that to remove the remnants of glue from the edges. It's never gonna look perfect, but as long as it's safe, I'd be happy to use it. Right, so it's about an hour later now, and 
It looks okay-ish, considering the destruction it took to get in it. Is it repairable? Yes. Would you be able to sell it on? No. Would you feel safe fixing it for someone else? No. But maybe if it was just for yourself and you know the limitations of it, then uh, yeah, I mean, I would be happy to use this in my house. So I'm gonna plug it in now. What I'm curious about is, I reckon that that would have made one hell of a pop to release all that fluid everywhere. But uh, yeah, I was, uh, my wife never mentioned that to me. So, don't know, it's strange. You would have thought that that would have made a big bang. That would have been memorable. Anyway, look at it there. So I'm just gonna plug it into the laptop just to make sure it's definitely charging. So there we go, you've got the charging light there. This is the power brick with the damage on it. And you can see there that it's plugged in and charging. So there you go. If you really want it to, they are fixable, but it's a big pain to get into and actually takes quite a long time to fix because of the way they've been glued. But still, it's interesting that one cap had gone, which I think took out the fuse. So yeah, now that that's been replaced, never know that power supply now might last for many more years to come, which is uh, which is good. I think it would be better maybe if they had like six security screws on there. And that way then, at least you know they are gonna be repairable, but I presume most of these are probably glued shut like that. So they're gonna end up mostly in landfill, which is a bit of a shame, but that is the way it goes. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a massive thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching.